Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. I'll return the dolly for now. I won't use it. I mean, if we do need to come back and we need to buy a dolly again, then so be it. That's what we will do. But for now, we will return that one. You will stop here and I'll turn those beacons off as well. Like that. Go there and return that one. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to go into here and we're going to go to trucks and we're going to have a look down through. Now, the Tatra Phoenix Agro Truck would be... That's my in first impulse is to go for that one. We're in, some, we're in the Alps in Europe, so we want the cab over versions. Um, we're not going for the... We're going for a man or a Tatra or something like that because we want a European brand. That's the Stevie one there. I like this one. I really do. I, I love this one here. This one's got a matching trailer to go with it as well. Doesn't actually say on here what the matching trailer is. But you've got that little truck there. It doesn't have a huge amount. It's only 13,250. But there is a trailer that goes with it. It's a pack. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, mod hub. It's, the whole thing's mod hub. And did I see it there? Have I gone past it? Need to find it now. It's a common sight here in the UK to see a small tipper like that and the trailer that goes with it. It's a beautiful, beautiful match. And it's not here. I've got an A train set up there. Where is that little trailer that goes with it? Agro liner? No, uh, it's not those. It's not that. I don't know. I don't know where that trailer is. I was sure there was a trailer to go with it, because those are trailers to go on tractors. They're not actually to go on trucks. Doesn't appear to be here. That's a little bit odd. I, I, I don't know where that one was. I was certain that there was an actual trailer to go with that. And there was a mod pack, and there was a trailer that went with it. So he's got a, he's got a hitch and everything. You can put a trailer on there. It's an aggro liner. Oh, maybe you just use a standard AgroLiner trailer on it. Go and put one of the standard AgroLiner trailers on it, and that's how you do it. But anyway, it looks really cool all in a line going up the road, and it is a common sort of sight. A short truck like this with a little trailer on the back, both tippers here in the UK. That is a thing that you see quite a lot of, actually. And man is quite a common truck to see in his country anyway. But we're in Central Europe... I mean, man, I believe, is also common in Central Europe. You've got man, Volvo, um, Scania. Those are the, kind of the big names. And personally, though, I like this one. I love this truck because of the all the attachments you've got on the back. Now, we don't want a, a GPS on that. Plus, the trailer hitch on the back right there. And we've got standard or trailer hitch. Does that is that the one that's got the PTO on it as well? Don't know. Not that we don't actually want a PTO on it, but we go with that. Now, what colour should we have? <gasps> We've got a beautiful red right there, which would go with our case and everything else that we're having. We can, of course, go for a hot pink truck, which if we were able to get like a hot pink tanker to go with it would look very cool. But I don't think we will this time. I'm not going to always do hot pink, even though I like hot pink. Uh, we're going to go with the red. We'll go with the red Tatra like that, the Tatra Phoenix, and the rim colour down here. Yes. Red and yellow. That is that is a very nice combination, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that is a very nice combination. So we will buy that one for $122,000. Euros. I don't know if some people do refer to do um, euros as dollars as well or not. I'm, I'm never quite certain on that one, so... We'll take this one. I'm not going to get anything else to go with it at the moment. And I'm hoping that this one will also get over that bridge a little bit better than the dolly and this trailer. But that will that remains to be seen. So we get that. We'll go and get one more load of cows now. I'm not going to fill up all 200 cows just yet. So I'll swing you in round there and rip the rubber sideways on the tyres on that poor trailer. And we will go racing into town. And... 
This is much better. This is much better. Look at the speed that we can do with this one. This is altogether better than what we have been doing. 80k we're coming up here. Although now I've got to go right round this corner without tipping anything over. That worked all right. And boom. Stop. Because I hit it hard enough, it then it's it's able to get over that little bit. So we, we, can, we can keep going. It's, it's only going into town that we have that. But it is there. The fact that it's there does irritate me a little bit. I may have mentioned that once or twice. We get 36 cows. No, 32 cows, isn't it? 30 something, 36 cows, sorry. We get our 36 cows and then we will worry about... Well, grass is going to be easy enough. We've, all, we've still got some grass there in our wagon. That probably will be enough just to give them some grass. And then I don't think I'm going to worry too much about anything else. I want to keep going forward with time and sort of get some other things uh, doing. Let me get to there, and we come down to Limazan Holsteins, right there. So if I move one of you over, that... Oh, yeah, see, that's 2,000. Oh, I can sell it back for 2,000. There's 2,001, 4,001, 6,002. Yeah, the price has gone down ever so slightly by the look of it, compared to what it was just now. We're now saving, e even though we've only gone by like an hour or two, we've already saved, okay, trailer is full, $14 this time instead of 43 So we've just saved ourselves 30 uh, euros. We've just saved ourselves 30 euros. Well, that's not bad going, saving 30 euros. Um, I, I think that's something that we can be pleased with. We can pat ourselves on the back over. Let's bring you back round this way. Back round this way. And we can go herring off back to the yard and get these unloaded. And that'll be it for cows for now. We might buy some more later in the year. Once we've got silage and other feed and stuff all set up. And then we can really start expanding out. We've got 200 maximum that we can put in there at the moment. But, I mean, we can always go and buy more cattle pens and squeeze more into new cattle pens. And, I mean, this is big scale. Remember, this is big scale, so maybe that's something that we want to be doing. But if we're going to be doing that, I'm going to be looking at getting some placeables for mixed feed. Because that's going to speed things up quite considerably. Um, the feed that we've got at the moment, the options that we've got for feeding at the moment, are we've, we do have the Pecan Mixer, the, the, the Mega Mammoth one. Um, that one is in the Mod Hub, so we have got that one, but it's still... Not an ideal situation, I don't think. I would rather have a bigger option than that so that I can, like, dump many bales in at once and, and scoop up large quantities of silage, all that sort of thing. Now, we'll bring this bad boy here in around the corner. And he's got a lovely tight turn on the truck, although I did go out over and I would have hit the sign. But I kept the trailer up on the, the road that time. So I, I feel we're making progress with our manoeuvring and, and shunting about. I'm going to keep hold of this trailer. I'm not going to go and return it because we are going to want it for pigs. And we are going to want to get more cows yet. Eventually, like I said, I will change things around a bit and I will get... Um, we'll start doing it just from the shed. I won't actually have... Uh, I won't actually be getting the deliveries myself with the animals, but um, th there are other things that we're going to be using this truck for, so uh, that bit I'm not too worried about there. So I can start shunting all of these over. Moving like that. So I've now got, once all of these go, I can't remember what we started off with. We're 80-something. We've now got 120 cows exactly. Excellent. 120 cows. So now all we've got to do is wait for the water for later on today. So I only need water... To last me until 6 p.m. And then I don't need to worry about the water again. Now, I'm thinking at the moment I'm not going to be using this truck for anything else for a while. So, I'm going to bring this one up here. We're not planning to put sheep on this map. So, I can sort of use this area here as a little bit of storage. So, I will drop you down there like that. Mm, which one am I going for next? Right, you need to be cleaned. You can stay there for a minute. And I want that tractor right there with the milk tanker. And then I want to go over to here. So water and grain 
are actually okay. They can last until tomorrow morning because it's two days worth of food, which means that they are technically... Why'd you do that? Right. There. Water, 5,800 litres. Grass, 4,800 litres. Cleanliness is 70%. I'll deal with the cleanliness first. Go to you. We'll lower that one down. And we'll leave that one there because I'm not going to put any more grain in today. Grain will go in tomorrow morning. I'll grab the bucket. I will clean the chickens and then we'll clean those cattle over there. That's all that's going to need to do. Then we can go and dump a little bit of grass in for them. Get that bit done. And then... Uh, hmm. I'm wondering if I'm going to need more grass. Are we going to need to go up and cut a little bit more? Just to sort of see us through. Well, I don't think we will. But there is always that possibility. Put that into there like that. Now, um, let's have a look at you. So I've got 4,800 just to there. Might have enough. I might. Uh, go and have a look there a second. I want to go in here, grass, and then I want to go to harvest. So we're, we're on the first stage of harvest with grass. So ideally, we do want the grass to grow a little bit more before we go doing any harvesting anywhere. And oh, incidentally, I have now got, uh, no, I want to go in here. I have got a new mod for our baling technology. One thing, though, with this mod, I, the idea of it is absolutely fanschmabulous, but it's this one here. Big baler, Massey Ferguson, this is the Heston baler, 6,100 litres per bale, but we don't have, unfortunately, a wrapper that will take Heston bales, as far as I know. So that one will be good for straw, and it will be good for hay, so we get more into them. Uh, but it's not going to be any good for standard bales. I mean, the only other thing that I can do is I can use the variable bale, uh, the variable capacity mod, which I was thinking of doing anyway and setting everything to 8,000 litres. If I just set all of the bales to 8,000 litres, it means that we're still handling bales, we're still dealing with bales, but on the plus side, we're not going to be having to deal with, you know, not having to move quite so many around. I mean, yes, it's true. I'm planning to do just about everything with autoloaders, which does make a big difference. One thing I do miss in this version of the game, and also I don't think there was any in FS17. I definitely had them in FS15, and I had them in FS13, is um, something like the Pecan Mixer. You know what, I'm going to... Actually, no, I'm leaving the bucket on it. Something like the Pecan Mixer. Um, but it auto-loaded bales. And I had one in FS13, definitely. I'm pretty certain I had one in FS15 uh, as well. And it was absolutely fantastic because you could auto-load bales. You just went up beside the bale stack and it auto-loaded into it. So I had this one in FS13. I had this one when I used to play... I didn't do any videos of FS13. This is when I played it for myself. And I modified the capacity because I had something like 5,000 cows on my farm. And I modified the capacity of the Pecan Mixer to 1 million units. And the bales, they'd all been modified as well. And, and then I would drive my mixer up beside the stacks and what I actually had was I had a stack of just take that back a little bit there we go uh, it was the self-propelled one so I had the silage for it I would go up to the stack of bales and I would auto load bales of straw and bales of hay both at the same time and then I would go and get some silage just to top the thing up with and you press the button each time you wanted to auto-load, but I'm pretty certain that in FS13, you had one button to auto-load hay and a different button to auto-load uh, straw. You could select which bale you wanted. So I could put in, park right in the middle of the two stacks, and then I could select and drop in the correct number of bales that I wanted very, very easily, drop those in without any problems whatsoever, uh, to the to get the exact right percentages on the feed and then once I'd put in enough of the bales then I go straight round to the silage clamp and 
auto load a load of that as well because it was a self-propelled one that picks it up from the front and I'd adjusted the inflow rates as well so I was dealing with millions of liters of stuff um, feeding 5,000 cows but I could do it in a reasonable amount of time now there was the one bit that I didn't want to do is I didn't want to just sit there for absolutely ages watching a little number bar fill up um, and I didn't want to be having to go backwards and forwards doing the um, the feeding of the animals over massive amounts. Oh, we've got a little bit of hay inside. Oh, that's because of the bit that uh, was spilled on the floor, wasn't it? Right, so that's 12,000. I'm definitely going to need at least one more to see us through until 6 p.m. when the installation is complete. So we're going to get one more right now. Then we'll come back and we'll get some grass and we'll tip that in. Um, but yeah, and so what I'd like to find is something like the Pecan Mixer... A self-propelled version of that one that's got, you know, the um, the bit that goes onto the silage clamp with the self-propelled ones and it loads the loose silage in the front. I want one of those that will either we can just like put the bales in the front of the thing, uh, bales of straw, bales of hay so that we don't have to tip them in and into the top. Or uh, just a, like one that's got an autoload script on it. Something along those lines I think would work really, really well. It would be absolutely fantastic. And for a very large scale series like this, it would be spot on perfect. I mean, if we can go in here, we've got to go to the self-propelled stuff for this one, the animals, right? It's, it's these here. The Stevie one is 68,000 litres, yeah? But it still only handles loose material loose silage loose hay loose straw i don't know what that is total mixed ration oh is that pellets i don't know what those two are oh is that telling me that the mixed rack the total mixed ration in there is it it could be um yeah i think it is see these two here these are quite low capacity 17,000 and 13,000 there's stevie one there at 68,000 liters that's the same as the pecan mixer which is really good so that's a step in the right direction but i don't think it takes the bales so i mean if we could take the bales up on the front of it instead of having to fork them in that would be quite a benefit to us because then we're not going to have to be spending hours and hours and hours of gameplay loading up cows and, and getting them all into the right uh, the, loading up bales and feeding them into the cows because ideally I would like, you know, I said that we're going to do large scale on here. And when I said that we're going to do large scale, what I was thinking, I don't think I've actually talked about numbers yet, but what I had in mind was to do something like a thousand cows. That means five large pens full of cows. Each large pen of cows, let's just see if the, the extra ones that we purchase are as big. Um, 200, okay? So five large pens full of cows, every single one of them full. That's what I'd like. I'd like five large pens of cows all full. In order to be able to do that, we're not going to be wanting to mess around with putting bales one at a time into the different mixers. It's just going to take too long. And so in order to be able to do really large scale, we've got to think outside the box a little bit. And my thinking outside the box is taking me towards something like that Stevie mod. If it would auto load bales, um, maybe even a bigger one than that. Something that's even larger in capacity. But I'd be quite happy using the Stevie mod on that one. And the Pecan, we've only got 11,000 litres of grass left in here. The Pecan mixer is definitely an option. It is definitely a viable option. Let's bring that back to there and unload that lot. We'll easily put all of that lot in. Right there. Get that unloaded. And let's have a look at our cows. Now, grass is actually going to be okay until tomorrow. That will be enough to see us through until tomorrow. 18,000 litres of water might be enough to see us through. Now, at the moment, the cows are still not fertile and they're still not producing any milk. I don't know how long it's going to take them. We'll have to wait and see. So we're all right for grass for today. We're not going to need any more than that. So I think what we're going to do now is have a little bit of a tidy up. I'll take you over. To, you, you can stop there a minute. I need to clean. Well, first up, let's go and put this case away. Because I don't need to do any fertilizer spreading. So I take that one and put that one away. And then once that one is parked up safely in the shed, then we'll go and get the um, new 
uh, the, the international. We get the international with the seed drill, and we will go and move that one. Let's back you up this way, like this. i got to decide which tractor I'm going to use to do the planting in the other field. Now, we use the international to do the planting so far. And I've used... I've done that. I've done all the planting with it, but I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll probably use the Challenger because I only use that one to do a little bit of cultivating. So I think, yeah, you know, a little bit of a break for the International. This is the oldest tractor that we got. and We don't want to spend all of our time using the very oldest machine that we've got because otherwise we're going to end up wearing the poor girl out. And we don't want to do that. Bring that back there like that and stop. Off we trot. Let's go to you. And get all of this cleaned down. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to speed the time up now. We're going to go to... I'll put it on 30 times just for a minute. We might go a little bit faster than that in a little while. But we do... We'll have it just sort of ticking along. So there, we've, we've cleaned that bit. And we can come over here. Hose this one down. There we go. Oh, we can actually see... Look at this. We've actually got an IMT underneath here. Is that... No, that's not international, is it? IMT is something different. It's... um. I can't remember what it stands for now. Absolutely can't remember what it stands for now at all. Never mind. Right. That's all cleaned off and looking shiny and fantastic. So we'll take you. i got to find somewhere to put the seed drill itself. And then I've also got to park up the tractor. I don't have any room in that shed. That one over there, I've got the plough in it. And then we're sort of using the other two bays. So... For now, we'll go and just... We'll, we'll put this one up over here. This one can go up on this side of the shed. It can go in there. That's not going to be too much in the way of anything, I don't think. And put that one there. Right. Yeah, you, you can stop there quite comfortably. And... I may as well take this one. And this one here can go in this shed as well. And I'll park that one next to... The IMT over here. This one is one that we're going to need to be able to access again if we want to be able to get some more fresh grass cut. We're probably not going to need all that much more fresh grass because as soon as we're able to make the TMR, we'll be focusing on that instead. I mean, even hay or silage, if we can get some of that going, that's um, preferable to just having the grass. The grass keeps them going for a bit, but it's not ideal because it gives them the lower yields, doesn't it? And we, d we don't want the lower yields. Right, let's get you... I'll get... Do I want to get one more? I'll tell you what. Let's, let's, let's go fast forward like this. 6 p.m. I still got five hours to go before we run out. Now, well, I could go and put some more water into those because all I got to go is... Uh, I just got to go and turn the tap. Gives you 48 hours. We can do 48. We need 307,000 litres of food to feed these animals for a year. Good gravy, man. 307,000 litres of food to feed them and keep them healthy. We're down to 14,000 litres of water for uh, 13 and a half. And we've got four hours to... You know, I think we're going to be all right. I think we will actually make it. Which means that we're not going to want this water tanker for quite some time. So I'm going to bring this one back here and I'm actually going to park that one back here in this line, in behind the cultivator. Oops. Okay. I'm shoving that. Now I'm... I'm I pressed the wrong pedal then. That's... that's at the, And again, I'm very... It's because I'm looking at it backwards. Very, very poor excuse. We've got a great demand at the spinnery. Right, that, that was very, very poor excuse. And very, very bad driving. Neither of which I feel was acceptable in the slightest. So I hang my head in shame on that, shunting all of that stuff around. That should not have happened. I'll bring you, but I'm going to put this one this way, like that, so that I'm still able to access that trailer over there. Because uh, we are going to want to be able to get to that trailer. And that one there, he's not in the way like that. He's not sort of causing any problems. I think he's going to be just fine. This one here, I'm going to put in the shed there. He's just going to stop right there. He's not going to go any further. And we're going to come over here. Four o'clock. 7,000 litres of water left at half past four. Now, remember, I've got a... Oh, there's a pipe up there. I wasn't expecting one to be up there in the air. 
You seem to be taking a while to actually install this. I thought it would have been done by now. It needs to be finished by 6pm. I thought that the, ins the installation begins at... But then, of course, the pigs is finished now. The pig pen one, that's all done. Yeah, that's, that's not doing anything. But if the installation is not yet finished, I am going to have to go and get some more. It could mean that the installation of the pipes here for the cows, it's not done yet. Right. It's not finished. There's still a lot of work to do. Which means that I've got to go and get some more water because we've only got three and a half thousand. And it would appear that it's going to take at least 24 hours for the installation job. Which I wasn't expecting. So we've got to get some more water. I'll get a couple tanker loads. It was me thinking I... Oh, so it finishes about 6pm with the chickens, doesn't it? But apparently this is not the case with the cows. So I've got to get, I would say, at least three tanker fulls for the cows. To be able to see them through the night. And we're get... we need to see them through the night. So we'll grab that one there like that. We'll run that one round to the pond and fill it up. Here's our first load. Get that one back round. We've got hardly anything left. Grass is good for the night. We'll be able to get some more of that in the morning. And by that time, we will have progressed on to the next stage of spring. So we may or may not be able to start doing some planting of corn. But we are going to be seriously considering doing some um, heavy mowing. We've, we've got a lot of mowing to do. Oh, no. Well... Some mowing. I mean, if you look at this, the actual fields of grass here, they're not even, they're not ready to start cutting yet. We've got these other fields of grass everywhere. Those are ready to start cutting, but we're not going to be doing those just yet. Soil composition. Yeah, there's nothing up there. So it's it's that bit round there. We've now got weeds growing across this field. And of course on field four as well. I'm thinking I'm probably going to leave the weeds. If they're just in these little tiny little patches like that all the way through, I don't think we need to worry too much about them. I think we'll probably be okay with those. I get another... I'll get one more tanker load and we'll... Yeah, well, I said three, didn't I? I'll get one a second and we'll see what that's looking like. I'm starting to think that maybe we should go and just get a tanker with our truck right now and then we can use that one for filling up and doing the water rather than doing it like this I mean I probably won't be a good idea to come out and then back it in round I'm thinking if we're going to be using the tanker although I'm not going to need to after tonight I don't need to right this, this is it for the water I, I get these three loads put in for the cows that's all I'm going to need to do I don't need to do anything else after that 10,000 litres there. So, yeah, we go another 14,000. I reckon it'll put us about there, which should be enough for the night. That's half a thing there. That's, that's definitely enough for the night. That's all going to be good. Take you on round. So, getting a water tanker for the truck is kind of a pointless exercise. We, we're simply not going to be needed. It's, it's not needed. We don't need to do anything with that. I have got quite a bit of silage spilled in front there. I'm wondering if I should be cleaning, like, aiming to clean cows and that, twice per day or once per day. And very old Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that... If you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.